Hi everyone, let's recap. We made some lovely rusty paper and fabric. We joined them together with other bits and pieces. We decided to make a landscape. Here we are now. So I'm grabbing out some extra bits and pieces in this part three. This is a salvage edge of material that I keep and use because it's got these lovely furry edges that look like grasses. So I'm just trying out a few different colours, placing them down, seeing is it a possibility? I think so. But along with that I'd like to add some other bits and pieces. I've decided it's all very similar colour and I would like to add in some light. So I've just grabbed some calico for now to see if I can do something. I'll try it in different spots. You know, I'm just trying those scraps at the moment. Could that work? You know, and then I'll cut them in a more organic shape and try them a few other places until I get it where I think I like it. And then when I do, I'm going to grab some glue and I'm going to maybe only just a touch of water this time, but with the PVA glue, I'm going to just tack it down a little bit before I stitch. Now what else can we find? This mesh, I've used it a bit in, in all kinds of uh, different instances, but I had these scraps and I thought, could we pop them up there in the sky? Could they look cloudish? So I've just pulling some of the weave apart and I've cut a, like I said, a more organic shape, but I might be able to use these little tiny scraps as well. Why did you hear that noise? That's a black cockatoo. They, folklore says it might rain. We'll see. I've just grabbed some tissue paper, plain old gift wrapping tissue paper, a very cheap and useful thing. And I'm just going to add a few bits in to break that line up, shade that down, hold this mesh down that doesn't glue very well. I've mixed some watery um, PVA glue here. And if I just make a few shapes like that and pop it over, it'll still show up what's behind, but it helps to blend things in sometimes. Oh, sorry. Well, I'm not really going to care if it shifts because I'm just going to let it go because it'll be nice. I'm sure it will be nice. Uh, I also bought this orange just in case I could use some. I didn't want to use much, but you know, because we have this really, really rusty coloured sky which is unusual perhaps it does have a little bit of red peeping through orangey colours perhaps it helps make it more believable but if I didn't like it I just put a bit where do I put it I don't know I'll leave it there Make sure it's a tear down. Maybe a bit up here. There's a tiny bit more here. So that added a little bit of, of colour without adding too much and it made our sky more believable. This is a very pale, pale yellow. Here you can see I'm bunching some up. That also works. Wrinkles. Makes it a stronger colour because there's more than one layer. Helps, helps uh, us think that that is a sky.
maybe. Is there any left? I've got some more orange, but I don't really want to put more orange in. Maybe a tiny bit up here. Okay, we'll leave it to dry. And now I'm thinking about stitching. I'm going to grab a variegated thread here. And I'm just going to add some dark color to start. You know, on that horizon line, just to, to uh, make it show up more. Just a simple running stitch. I'll go along and then I'll come back. Might use some other threads as well. So here we go, I've gone across, sometimes under the horizon, sometimes just above it. Nice wavy lines create contours, it's good. Uh, so you won't be able to do too many stitches in a row, um, you know, before you pull it through, because it is, you know, we've got some different layers there. But you should be able to do one or two. Sometimes you have to just pull it and then poke it back up again and just do it, do it slowly, just depends. When you're finished with the colour, take it through to the back and do a couple of stitches on top of each other to end off. Let's have a look here. I had a tiny bit left of my thread, so I did a little bit of seed stitching. Well, now I'm using a yellow one, I'm just showing you how to finish off like I was talking about just then. But let's turn it over and have a look. I have gone merrily along. I've done some yellow stitching. I don't know if you can quite pick that up. I've done it in the sky to hold some of them layers down. And I've done some uh, variegated one, like I say, on that horizon. Time for another colour. I'm going to grab this lovely orange, burnt orange. So I'm just going to go about adding these lines. Just running stitch, maybe a little bit of seed stitch like you can see there. But really I'm just going from one side to the other, making sure that anything that needs to be, uh, have a stitch through it to hold it down, has it. But also these lovely curving lines that suggest clouds or or landscape many things but when you get it from a distance you start to think oh, that could really be something let's just have a closer look at some of this stitching the orange turned out nicely I've brought more colors in some greens and some browns yeah. And that's helped to hold it down, like I say. I've still got more to do, but it's a really good start. But let's finish this. Let me show you what I'm going to do next. Right. So we did a lot of those stitches across, holding everything down. I've even given it a bit of a, a press with the iron. And let's get on to finishing this. Remember we were going to use some of these things. These are the salvages of other materials, but I like collecting them because I think they look like grasses and things. So I'm just going to take off some of that because this is a velvet and it's got quite a thick thick layer there. It's really just using whatever's available to you and looking at things and imagining what they could be. See, 
I think that would be all right, something like that. Uh, might try and wrinkle this one up a little bit so it doesn't look quite so much of a strip. So we'll have a go at that. There's something else I've gotten out. This is a variegated yarn. Just as long as it'll fit through a needle, that needle will do me. Needs to go through an eye. So just doing lines or fly stitch or stitches going upwards. I could add another bit here. I could pop a little bit of furry one into a hill shape there on the on the foreground because it will be going under a frame so there's plenty there that I can work on and that's just what I would do I'd do some stitches going upwards and some thick some thin some different and that would sort my foreground out for me well, there's one other area I'm wanting to work on today and that is well, maybe this, because this is a bit white. I know I wanted some white, uh, but I may need to tone that down a little bit. And this, this is still not showing up enough for me, this horizon. What I'm wanting to do is just a few skeleton kind of trees. And I'm just doing fly stitch. And I can just pull it like that. And I can just go, the last one can be down there to anchor it, and that's kind of a tree shape, isn't it? A skeleton tree. So I'll be trying that. Sometimes they'll be single. Sometimes one will be higher than the other. See? That way we end up with a bit of variation, so it looks more natural. There we are. That kind of thing. You can see why I love these variegated yarns. The colour's going into orangey yellow now. Let's just have a close look now, again, at some of the areas that we're working on. Let's get this video finished. I just wanted to show you how it all came together, built itself in, in a way. I've done a lot of fly stitch. Some of that was holding down those trees just there. Some of them is, uh, you know, smaller ones that are on the horizon, different colors, bunches of them. Look at how I've used a light color here on that on those trees, and it, it made, uh, made it really pretty, I think. Really picked it up. I just added a few French knots as well to this area I was trying to tone down. That makes it look more like a hill. But I do like these trees. And then I continued on and used it to hold down that, that piece of salvage from materials that I've been using. But let's remember that it always looks much better from further back. I hope you've enjoyed watching this and we've come up with a few new ideas. My name's Tracy. If you've liked it, don't forget to press like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time for something different. Thanks again for watching.